Okay, I think we're live. We Welcome to Reverse Quarantine Kitchen. This is a new series we just started. This is the second episode of Reverb's Quarantine Kitchen. Uh, this one is featuring, you guessed it, Stefan Lassard, bassist of Dave Matthews Band, although in this Photoshop photo, he's playing a giant whisk. He's going to be sharing with us. This is my daughter, Sloan, by the way. Thanks, Sloan. Good job. I can turn this camera around if I know how to. Here we go. Hi. Yes, I am not just a disembodied voice. This is Adam Gardner. I play in the band Guster and also am the co-founder along with my wife of a nonprofit called Reverb, who's been working with Dave Matthews Band for over 15 years now to make their tours more green. And he Waiting for it. Ladies and gentlemen. There he is. Oh, you're sideways. Um, sideways because we didn't check it on Instagram. We checked <laughs> it on. Uh... All right, let's see what happens. Let's see. Uh, technical we're... difficulties from the start. We're all let's good. See. Look at that. Now we're That's looking. That's pretty amazing. Now we're looking good. We can't see you as well. Well, I'm coming in. I got. I'm cameraman and uh, cook. I'm dad. Yeah. Or you know what? We can't. Lift it up a little bit. So Stefan, you've got the playlist going, but you know what? We're going to put this later on YouTube, so we can't actually have that music on. Uh, right. Gotcha. <laughs> so you want me to turn it off so you can hear me talk? Yeah. I can hear you. Yep. So for, for those who Cooking are, without music like, is hard. You're tuning in to... I'll try, I'll try it for you guys. One sec. Here we go. I've got this whole thing, Jimmy Ray the duct tape. You can't see the backside of the camera. It's really funny. Yeah. All right. Hey, everybody. It is. Welcome, Stefan, to Reverb's Quarantine Kitchen. Thanks for doing this. Thanks for having me. So uh, what are you cooking up for us today? Well, I'm going to make um, what I call it. It's actually daddy's eggs. They're the original term. Um, and uh, But we, we, I'm calling it Fonzie's Dirty uh, Tortilla because um, this uh, the original tortilla part of the recipe. If you don't know, a Spanish tortilla is actually an egg omelet, and there's different ways you can do it. But the most common way is like potatoes in the egg omelet, um, and that's like a Spanish tortilla. So uh, my friend Jose Andres uh, showed me a pretty interesting way to make a college boy uh, Spanish tortilla, where you use uh, potato chips instead of uh, potatoes, because you usually have a bag of potato chips lying around, but to roast potatoes in college, is, especially if you're in a dorm, is kind of hard. So um, so anyway, I tried it, and I loved it. I brought it back home, and I've kind of expanded on the tortilla part and uh, added some vegetables and some greens. And um, yeah, and that's what it is. It's crazy creation, a awesome. creation. I'm going to show everybody who's looking um, right now the ingredients that you laid out for us also again another chance to look at this amazing photoshop version of you playing uh, a giant whisk <laughs> <laughs> or a giant ketchup bottle look at that well, I tell you, when, uh, so you know it's interesting i did a william sonoma um cooking show with andres i mean uh, jose andres uh, at bottle rock like two years ago we were on stage i was on stage with um Mike Dirt and Robert Trujillo from Metallica, from Green Day, the two bass players. And we, we they made us pizza peel bases. I don't know if you know what a pizza peel is, but a pizza peel is the thing that they throw in, the wooden thing you throw into the pizza oven and pulls out the hot pizza. And so they took one of those, they put some pickups on it and put some three strings on it and bass strings and it became a, a fretless bass guitar. They had us all out there jamming along with kitchen pots and pans and stuff. And Jose walks out with this huge Iberian ham, just starts rocking out with it. It was so, it was so rad. Um, but anyway, so yeah, the whisk was awesome. Thanks for hooking me up with that. <laughs> From Reverb. Um, you know, I do want to get into some of the environmental stuff, but why don't we get into the cooking and we'll kind of interject as uh, there's maybe some natural lulls in your recipe. Yeah, sure. What do you want to start? You want me to just start showing you? Well, you know, well, I already rinsed the vegetables, so I like to cut prep first um, because, uh, well, what happens is usually there's, you start, if you start, 
start with the eggs and then try to cook the vegetables after the eggs kind of starts rolling on top of each other and you start falling over your ankles. So um, we'll cut up the vegetables first. Now I put kale um, down there because that's my favorite leafy green to use in this recipe. It's the dirty part of the eggs, of the, of the tortilla. You're throwing these vegetables on top of the tortilla and the veggies have this real earthy kind of crunchy um, thing. And that's what I consider to be the dirty part of the tortilla. And the potato chips, that's all, Jose. I can't take credit for that. So I just wanna make that clear. Okay, so we'll start. So anyway, we have, uh, you know, I'm not going to grocery stores right now as little as possible. And actually myself, not at all. And uh, we get a farmer's, uh, a farmer's box every week. And today's the day we get the box. So I'm actually out with, without kale right now. <laughs> but I found some leftover broccoli. And the thing with, with, uh, with, I had spinach and I had spinach and broccoli and I'm thinking to myself, okay, so I want kale. Cause I want kale or I want like collard greens. I want something real hearty and leafy. But all I had was lettuce, spinach and broccoli. And um, so with this recipe, I feel like the broccoli will work just as well. So like you can add, I would go on the heartier side than the leafy, leafy side. So spinach might not work so great with this recipe just because you kind of want the crunch and the texture on top of the eggs. Awesome. So, that's, that's cool about this recipe is that you can kind of improvise with what you have at home a bit too. Oh yeah. And you know, like I didn't even know we haven't had potato chips. I actually found this bag. I thought we were out, but I did have a couple of potatoes left. I was going to roast a couple of potatoes and slice them up and put that in with the eggs. Um, if I didn't have potato, the potato chips. So uh, I got lucky with the potato chips because that's really the fun part of this recipe. Uh, we're going to take out the vegetable. I think, you know, there is a specific vegetable knife, the one that's flat, like yeah. that, supposedly. Um, and I'm going to cut this broccoli pretty small. I don't want big broccoli chunks because. The thing with the kale is I cut it up pretty small, so it mixes nice with the, the celery. And, and these little bits and pieces, I guess you could keep. I clean the counters. I've washed my hands. Just want to put that out there. I did used to work in a restaurant in the kitchen, and always make sure your hands are clean. In fact, you should clean your hands probably. Can we talk about your history? Because uh, as far as I know, I thought your entire career was playing bass because you started so young, but apparently you had a career before you played in Dave Matthews Band? So, yeah, starting <laughs> at 14, um, I was, I was uh, working in a restaurant. I worked in, um, my mom worked as a waitress at this restaurant. It was a nice restaurant in Charlottesville, Virginia. And uh, when I was 14, I got paid under the table, you know, which is there illegal. Is. That, that's I love you. my early, you know, and realizing my, my early career is basically just me doing a bunch of illegal jobs. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to be working in the restaurant. I wasn't supposed to be playing bars, um, but I did. And so uh, when I was 16, I actually legally was working in that restaurant. I stayed at that restaurant for, from 14 to just about 19 when the band really started to get successful and I can uh, quit that job. How old are you in this photo that you sent me earlier? This is I would say I was either late 14 or probably more 15 in, the, in that picture. Let's and say I 15 think that, legal. Huh? I think 15 makes it legal, so let's say 15. Yeah, I was 15 <laughs> there. I was dishwashing at 14, so very possibly that was when I, I got moved up to, like, prep cook and line cook when I was, like, 15-ish or so. And um, it was right before the ban happened. And I tell you what, like, being a dishwasher and playing upright bass or any bass at all, but upright bass with big strings and gut strings, I was having the worst problems with my hands. Like I was using really nasty chemicals to clean it all, you know, to clean the dishes and the pots and pans. My hands were in water all the time. Then I'd go home and I'd practice upright bass for a couple hours, get up the next morning, practice, go to school, do ensembles and stuff like that. And by the end of the day, my hands were shredded. And I realized that it was to do with, the, the the detergent in that I was using in the dishwashing machine and also in the hand washing. So when I went up to cook and prep, 
that went away. I loved it. I, 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 that was so much fun being a prep cook. And a... Okay, okay, so back to cooking. Um, Hold on. Before you go back to cooking, I got some questions from folks that uh, they asked you what your favorite restaurant in Charlottesville is. In Charlottesville, that would be hard for me to tell you because I haven't been there for so long that I'm sure there's some restaurants there that I don't know of that are amazing. Um, growing up, uh, we kind of went to like uh, Chili's. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, there's a lot of Mexican restaurants around town. La, La Guadalajara is one that was pretty popular for my family. Um, and then uh, later on, you know, there's some. Uh, I'm having a hard time coming up with some names. So let me all, if I think of uh, some other good restaurants in Charlottesville, I'll let you know. I'll tell you, uh, there's some good restaurants almost everywhere. Mom and pop restaurants. I, there's a little diner in um, Georgia, in Athens, Georgia. That I just, I have this, the fondest memories of eating breakfast there. I don't even remember what it was I was eating, but it just, it, it, it stuck with me. And, um, and, uh, yeah, so traveling the country and stuff. I mean, going from like super nice restaurants to like mom and pop diner places to like some of my favorite like hush puppy places, uh, fish and chips shops, like things like that. Great. Hey, for those who are just tuning in, welcome to Reverb's Quarantine Kitchen. This is Stefan Lassard below cooking for us. Here's the little ad for it. Uh, and I'm Adam Gardner. Uh, from the band Guster and Gus Dave Matthews Band have played together a long time ago. It's been a long, we've known each other quite a while, Stefan. I know. It's like, it used to be like, oh, Adam, that guy from Guster that I know. Now it's just like, oh, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've done a lot of stuff. I mean, between the reverb, so also I started a nonprofit called Reverb, which is, uh, we're, you know, this is, this is live from Reverb's. Instagram as well as Stefan's. Um, if you're interested in the recipe, it's actually, there's a link in the bio on Reverb's Instagram. This is the second of a series. Uh, Brian, the drummer of Guster, made a, a cauliflower soup last week, so you can go to Reverb's Instagram and see it there. And we plan to do this every week, so there'll be another guest hopefully next week that we can announce soon. So check it out. Thank you, Stefan, and uh, let's continue with our program. <laughs> yeah. All right, so you know that you're never supposed to cut. Let me show you the proper way to cut vegetables. I, I'm, it's going to be hard because I can't zoom you in. But if you can see, like with your knuckles, you cut with, you hold celery stock, carrot, stuff like that, and you guide it with your knuckles. If you push your fingers out like that, you're going to slice off a finger. Please don't so slice off a finger. Lots of people mad at me for having you cook on this show if you hurt yourself. You know, <laughs> Yeah, uh, they might be more bad at me as well. Um, I used to do this faster, but I don't want to show off and show off how good I am at slicing my fingers. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do it nice, easy. And then we compost all our food. Nice I job. A, I have a nice little compost. Um, we have a machine that breaks it down really quick for us. I can throw it all over the yard. I have some nasturtiums outside that have been getting fed compost like every single night because I end up just throwing it out to them. That's okay. awesome. Okay, so here we go. So here's the veggies. So the celery, broccoli. Now, if you're using kale, I would suggest to, I would suggest to um, start the kale first. No, I'm sorry, start the celery first and then add the kale. But with the broccoli instead, broccoli and celery take about the same amount of time to, to cook. So we'll start there. Um, I just do a small dash of olive oil uh, in my pan over here. And this is an iron skillet for the vegetables. And then I have a nonstick for the eggs. And I think I just ran out of olive oil. So we might be uh, seeing what happens there. All right, so we're going to turn it on. A I'm really bad at cooking super high because in the restaurant that I used to work at, I used to like always cook in high heat, um, but you were really quick and you stood right over it. We're at home. Um, you don't tend to stand right over your food all the time. So I've been getting better at cooking at like more medium heat. So we're going to put it at medium heat, let, it, let the oil kind of get a little lighter texture, a little sizzly, and then we'll pour the veggies in. 
Someone, someone yeah. asked who the Do song sounds like. But... I have a little helper here, but she yeah. she might come in a second. <laughs> um, so, have you ever had this, Adam? Oh yeah, it sounds great. Yeah. Is so, it true? East. My my uh my growing up, my parents were vegetarian. Um, from the time I was three till my dad's still vegetarian. Actually, my mom has been off and on. But um, so I didn't really start eating meat till I was probably late in my 20s or something. Tried it in my teens. <laughs> Nutritional yeast was our chicken. Yeah, this was like, um, my mom would make a chicken flavored gravy that we put over a tofu loaf for Thanksgiving. And, and this was what basically the gravy started. So I don't know too much about nutritional yeast other than I like the flavor. I think it adds an earthy-ish sort of chickeny kind of flavor to something. And if you're vegan, I'm not vegan, but I don't really eat much meat. So I still do, do love this flavor. Anyway, we're going to be using this on the vegetables. And this is kind of part of the dirty part. It's yeasty. It's kind of going to make it look a little yellowy. But it tastes amazing. So I think the, uh, I think the oil is good now. We're going to pour I've never done a cooking show either, but. Someone just commented, they said, I think the reverb guy looks uncomfortable. I'm very comfortable. I'm actually fascinated and want to learn <laughs> uh, nutritionally <laughs> and how it is available at most grocery stores. So you should be able to find that, no problem. Someone was asking, uh, someone asked you while you were talking, um, who does most of the cooking at home? My wife. Nice. Yeah. Have you been doing more these days now that you're home and kind of locked down? Or? Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, she, she, she's, she's an incredible chef. Um, right now there's, you can't see it cause it's literally the fumes of it. It's coming right in front of this, uh, my iPhone, but there's, um, in the uh, crock pot here is a uh, slow cooker is 48 hour bone broth that she's wow. cooking. Um, and you know, everyone is talking about with the COVID-19 about like immunity and masks and all this stuff. But then we also have to take it upon ourselves to eat better and be healthy to our bodies and make sure our bodies are um, being taken care of with the foods and stuff you put in. And bone broth is one of those foods that will really help your immune system. Definitely. Um, so cooking for your immune system. Meanwhile, <laughs> cooking and talking can be dangerous. So, <laughs> said, the I, the these veggies now, I like to add the yeast. I add the yeast and a little soy sauce to the veggies. If you don't like soy sauce or you don't have any, sprinkle a little bit of salt. You're going to be fine. Um, but I like the flavor of the soy sauce mixed with a little bit of the yeast, a little black pepper, and that's all you need for the vegetables. I'll sprinkle the black pepper on there now. Nice. Uh, some, some folks were asking about my apron. Yes, I'm wearing an apron to be here in spirit since I'm not cooking along with the fawns, although I will be doing a recipe tomorrow morning for breakfast for the kids. All right. Um, here we go. Uh, so iron skillet, you can use steel. But I prefer... Now, let's see. We can get to the egg part. you want to get to the egg part? Cause, Heck yeah. All right. So, because you're right, we're going to need to let these soak for a second anyway. Let me just go ask my assistant if... We're getting there. Okay, she's still getting there. <laughs> Maybe she'll help me with the chip. So, first we'll do that. We're going to crack the eggs. There's no... I've heard many different ways to crack an egg, so I hope everyone knows how to have their favorite way to crack an egg. I just crack it. Like, it's funny. I, I, I'm a, I'm a one-hander, like, and, I, and I don't do it because it's fancy. When I do it with two, I somehow end up with all the shells in there. But with one, somehow it works better for me. One hand? Yeah. I don't know why, but yeah. In the restaurant, we used to, uh, I used to crack tons of eggs. And for the longest time, we were making Bernays sauce and Hollandaise sauce and use the eggshells to, to separate the egg yolk from right. the yolk. They don't suggest that nowadays because salmonella can actually go on the outside of the eggshell. 
And mm. so when you do that, if there is salmonella on the eggshell, you get a little bit of it. Huh. Um, so these veggies are coming good. You kind of want, like, with celery and with broccoli, like, I want a little crisp to it, but I don't want it to be soggy. Um, so I kind of am just watching it right now. It's, once you put the tamari on, it can crisp up real quick. Um, and same with the yeast. So we're going to wait a second for those two. So with the eggs, we got the eggs now. And what we'll do is we'll grate some cheese. And I have a little cheddar, a little mozzarella. Um, I think mozzarella works good. Cheese, um, grated um, jack, any Mexican cheese. I would stay away from feta, blue cheeses, stuff like that. I don't think it's going to taste very good. But then again, give it a try. I mean, cooking's so fun. It's like music. It's like you can try, try little things and things work out. And if you're feeding for dinner, a family for dinner, and you fail, you know, you'll remember that. <laughs> <laughs> you'll know what works, what doesn't. All right. You mentioned uh, this one. My daughter loves this. And I think she's a little shy right now. She wants to come say hi. We'd love to see her. There are a bunch of people saying, show your kids. I know. Well, my other kids are up in in homework school land. They're like, OK, Dad, you're doing a cooking show? <laughs> you're gonna, what are you going to burn? <laughs> OK, see, now I'm going to get some. I'm going to show you guys close up these veggies, because now is a good time to put I don't know if you see this. Yeah, those are looking good. Yeah, so just nice. A little, little brown, a little, but not, still got some crisp to it. And then what we do is we just throw a quick little dash. Not too much. Soy sauce can overpower everything, so just a real quick little dash of soy sauce. And then the most important ingredient, the nutritional yeast. And you can be kind of liberal with that. Maybe I think I think I put like a quarter cup or something in the recipe. I kind of just eye it, and then you just move it, stir it up. All right, now I'm gonna turn that off. Now that's ready to go. Let me show you the dirty veggies. These guys are dirty and ready to go on something. Oh, looking dirty. I like it. Now, you know, the kale, is, it really adds more greenery, and I don't know. There's something about kale um, mixed with celery for me. It's magical. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back to the eggs. Fun yeah. Part. All right, so we got cheese, so, and then kale chips. Um, these are apple cider vinegar potato chips, because this is all I can find. <laughs> I've used apple cider potatoes before, and it actually, it's okay. It doesn't make it weird. Um, but salt is regular. It's best, I think. But, you know, try some, try some like, Lay's flavor. Try Cool Ranch. I mean, you know, this is, like, just a base, a base to then become more creative with. So we're going to start. We really want, we want to take these potato chips and you... Good crunch. Crunch them up. And the crunchier, the better. I mean, you don't. That's why I prefer. Jose Andres makes an incredible potato chip that I would highly suggest. It literally is the best ingredient, best potato chip you could probably use for this recipe. But we're, we don't have any Jose Andres potato chips. And you're saying if you don't have chips at home, you can, even if you have potatoes, you could. What do you do with the potatoes if you're going to have potatoes? Yeah, so I would slice up a potato, like just one roasted potato. First off, I'll show you. So now you're mixing up. The, I'll mix the potato and the egg first, and then I'll put the cheese in. Um, you, you, fingerling, fingerling potatoes would be great. Um, I've had that in this before. You slice them up really little, and then they just kind of, so the egg and the potato kind of becomes one, one once you cook it. 
And that's what's kind of cool about the torta. I mean, the tortilla. Okay, now I'll put my cheese in. And I'm not going to use all of it because I feel like I made too, too much cheese. Some pepper. And then for this, just a teeny little pinch of salt. Nice. People are people are wondering about the potato chips. If that's a good idea or not. Well, I mean, it's it's up to you to try and tell me if you like it. Um, I love it. I I think it adds. You know, the other thing with the salt, you have to be careful if you have super salt potato chips. I did just put salt in here. Um, I usually do put a little pinch of salt in, but uh, you might not need if you're if you have high blood pressure or, or something. Maybe just use the potato chips. You don't need to use the salt too because then you have the salt and potato chips going in the eggs. It's going to taste great. Um, the chips, they cook down to be like potatoes in the eggs. Um, oh. the, they, they don't take long at all. It's not, it's not weird. I was highly impressed when Jose showed me how well it worked. Um, so the egg mixture is ready to go. So I'm like this, <laughs> the moment of truth is is cooking the egg. So here we go. We're gonna, I ran out of olive oil. So have my uh, backup avocado oil. Try and use good healthy fats. Um, I had high cholesterol, high blood pressure, all that stuff like two years ago and started changing my diet and things. And, uh, and now those numbers are down to normal. So I can enjoy potato chips without worrying about high blood pressure. Now the egg temperature is tricky. I like to leave it medium high. Um, depends on your stove, depends on gas, electric, uh, what type of pan you're using. Um, but the idea is to get it so it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan, but it gets a nice little, you know, brown crust and then you flip it. Oh, you're going to flip it in the pan? You're not even going to use a spatula? That's the goal. Wow. Okay. Right. So, and hopefully, and, uh, and if, my daughter, if my daughter comes over, if, if she comes over, she will yell, flip it, flip it, flip it, <laughs> flip it. <laughs> By the way, I like to mix my um, eggs with Jimmy Kimmel's face. Wow. Where did that come from? From playing the show? From No Kid Hungry. They did a thing a while back. That's super cool. Yeah. Anyway, Jimmy's face got egg on it. Wow. Okay. Almost there. Anything else? What's going on? Got a question? Uh, yeah. People are wondering a lot about that giant ketchup bottle. Is there actual ketchup in it, and where did you get it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the great thing about living somewhat near uh, L.A. is that you, you find really unique an antique stores. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing in it. That's bizarre. So maybe a couple spiders. <laughs> God, don't put those in. Yeah. I mean, you got Do to another little too. I said your favorite ketchup or hot sauce. There well, it I'll is. I'll talk about the hot sauce in a second because I do have a favorite hot sauce for this recipe. Awesome. Okay. Uh, just to there are a few people that were chiming in that were, weren't sure what they're looking at. So I'm just putting this up again. You're at Reverb's Quarantine right. featuring Stefan. Stefan and Dave Matthews Band and Reverb have worked a bunch together. You may have seen the Eco Village on tour with them. Reverb helps the band go green on tour and engage bands like you to take action for people on the planet. And so Stefan's doing this cooking show. We don't normally do this. This is the second episode of our series. And uh, take it on. Okay, I want to mention um, one thing is that this egg mixture, like we've been letting it sit. We didn't pour it right into the pan. That's what you want to do. You want to let the potato chips kind of soak in the eggs before you throw it right in. You might, I don't know what it would be like if you didn't let it sit for a second, but I think it's a better idea to do it. All right, so we're going to pour this egg potato cheesy mixture into our pan. So would you say at the medium heat, like how hot is that? 
this is that exactly medium. I'm going to turn it up just a little bit. But um, you can let, but it doesn't need to fry. I mean, it's it's cooking. Uh, when we did it with the cook, with when Jose um, had me up on stage that time to make his Spanish tortilla, he had a pan that was like this big. Wow! And so we used literally two cartons of eggs, um, like a block of cheese. <laughs> it was like, wow. and then he, <laughs> you see him ever flip something? I mean. It was spectacular. Uh, so we're going to attempt for a slickness of the flip in a mini, mini side. Now, what I like to do is, as it's cooking a little bit, this pan in particular likes to stick on the edges a little bit. So I just take my spatula, and as it starts to solidify, I just kind of move it around. Make sure no area is sticking because the flip's coming pretty soon. Oh boy. Yeah, see, I can already tell that it's ready to flip. I'm just. Okay. So, how do you know? How do you know when you're ready? You just can tell by the color of it? Because you do this. You do this, and you're like, all right, it's almost ready because I can see the edges are all coming off the pan nicely. The bottom looks like it wants to turn. It's getting hot enough. Oh, One, man. two, three. Ah! Oh, yes. hey, you did it! Yes. yes! I can't believe that just happened. <laughs> I know that was the moment you were scared of right there. That could have been oh. a fail. <laughs> oh, it flipped. Congratulations, you did it. All right, thanks. All right, now <laughs> the rest is easy. The rest is... The rest is fun now. Um, maybe a couple slices of toma tomatoes with some parsley as a garnish might be nice with this. I don't have tomatoes right now or parsley, but <laughs> <laughs> well, they would be nice. I mean, you know, <laughs> this is a truly quarantine cooking show. That's right. You got to work with what you got. So let's see. I'm gonna let that. Now I might turn this down. What I just did is I turned it down because. Right now, um, I don't want it to cook. I don't want the sides to cook anymore. I want the top not to be as dark as this. That's about as dark as you want to get that yeah. egg. And that's cheese and it's potatoes and. <clears throat> All right, so I think it's almost ready. Yeah, so you want you can squish it, <laughs> squish it. You squish it, and there's still a little something in there, and then now you can, you know, you now you can work with it with the spatula. But that's pretty much the the tortilla, Spanish. That tortilla. looks great. That looks great. Do you, do you put do you put sauce on that, or do you do you eat just as is? What's how do you like to roll that? Well, so what we're doing now is. We have the egg like that, and um, you know, actually, the traditional way is to slice it like a pizza almost. So I'm gonna go ahead. I don't normally do that, but this this is like a meal. This is a breakfast that my daughter and I I would make my daughter almost every morning when I got up, and she she's like would wait for me to get up so she could make this with me. And then by the time it came to this part, normally I'm just cutting it like crazy because so she could you know eat it. It's not big chunks. But this time, what we'll do is we'll just cut it up like a little pizza. Nice. By the hey, way, boy. when, when the world opens back up, if you're ever one of my favorite chefs, obviously I've talked a lot about him today, is uh, Jose Andres. But if you're ever in New York City and you go to Little Spain, it's amazing. And you um, can get a real Spanish tortilla at Little, at Little Spain, just like they uh, do in Spain. Okay, so there's your Spanish tortilla with potato chips, cheese. And guaranteed, you're going to be surprised when you try this. 
and you're going, I can't believe how good it is with potato chips. It works. That's awesome. Yeah, hopefully people will try this at home. The recipe is posted in the bio of Reverb's uh, Instagram. So if you go over to Reverb's Instagram, if you're watching this from Stefan's, the, his recipe is in the bio. Okay, now we're taking this, these vegetables we made a little earlier, and we're just gonna nicely put them on top of the eggs. So now you have your final decision. Do you use hot sauce or ketchup? Um, I'm using ketchup today because I think my daughter is going to end up eating this. Um, and I prefer um, actually unsweetened ketchup. I didn't know if you knew this, Adam, and out to everyone else, but ketchup has a lot of sugar. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tons of sugar. And um, I don't notice the difference between regular sweetened and unsweetened other than that I think the unsweetened tastes more like good ketchup so I I'm using unsweetened ketchup for that so how you know uh you can make a face if you have a squirty bottle you can you know that at this point it's kind of more your own creative decisions um in fact I will wait on the ketchup I'm not going to put it on there quite yet um until she's ready to eat it but for hot sauces, let's talk hot sauce for a second. Let's do it. All right. I am a fanatic lover of hot sauce. Um, for eggs, I like to have something a little like almost taco sauce flavor, you know, like yep. like uh, tapatio, I guess, is one. Um, but this is my new favorite, Dave's Gourmet Curtain Habanero. All right. That's backwards, but we can see it. That's great. Yeah. So don't be scared by, first off, Dave has the insanity sauce, which will burn a hole through your tongue. Um, this is actually a really flavorful hot sauce. It's great for your eggs. It's got a little heat factor, but it's not like a normal habanero sauce. It's way more mild. So nice. Anyway. Do you remember those hot sauces? So for those who are tuning in and wondering who the hell I am, I'm Adam from the Van Guster and also started Reverb. This is Reverb's second episode of the Quarantine Kitchen. But, uh, you know, Stefan and I have known each other a long time, not only because Guster and Dave Matthews Band have played together, but I, Dave Matthews Band have Reverb. Done. And we went to Peru, Stefan and I, and do you remember the hot sauces there? there oh, yeah. Them. There's actually, there's like a red pepper hot sauce from Peru that's amazing. Yeah, I have a couple. Like there's that coconut. Remember, there's like a yellow, almost fruit. Yeah. Also spicy. I I've that been was super that song. Yes. Yeah. I actually have a photo of our trip. We went to the rainforest. There we are. That's so that's James Maroon Five and Katie Tunstall, and that's Nico from the Peruvian rock band called Canaco y El Tigre. And Nico. Also on Instagram, on Reverb's Instagram, there's actually, you know, Stefan and all of us got back together just a couple of days ago on Zoom and talked about our trip and showed the, a trailer of the documentary that we made down there. Um, that's also on Reverb's Instagram. If you want to check that out, just go to Reverb underscore org on Instagram. All right, Stefan, that's enough advertising for me. What you got there? <laughs> What's that? I'm, sorry, I, that, I'm done with the advertising for now. Look at that. Can you hold that up nice and close? This is the final shot right there. Nice work. Thank you, Stefan, for doing that. That I was Fonzie's Dirty Tortilla is what we're calling that. The recipe is in, in the bio on Reverb's Instagram page. We'll be posting it elsewhere. Um, thanks again. You know what? If you are interested in, we mentioned a couple of cause things that I think are worth talking about. Um, you talked about your farmer's box. This is a really uh, a good time to support farmers and the band and you have always been doing that. I know at home, you, it sounds like you have a CSA going, which is great with the farmer's box. And then of course on tour, uh, Reverb and Dave Matthews band have been doing a program called farm to stage where we work with your caterers and make sure within like X miles of every venue that the concert plays, you guys are actually helping family farmers when you're, when you're, uh, when Dega is making you food backstage. And for those who want to make a donation, because not everyone, unfortunately, a lot of people who are hurting and hungry right now. Um, we've been working with a great organization called Why Hunger, 
And if you want to make a, a donation, they're getting food to people who are vulnerable right now. You can go to whyhunger.org slash rapid response. And if you are able to make a donation, please do. Yeah, you know, it's such important work that the farmers do in general. I think they're really underappreciated. Um, and uh, things happen like this. And it just makes you realize that, um, you know, these, these are the front lines of the people in the food industry are the ones in the soil. Everything comes from, from the ground. Totally. Have you, how have you, uh, you know, now that we're done with the recipe, we can just talk a little bit if you're down to hang out for a sec. Sure. Um, what have you guys been doing at home? Like, I know you have a family of family here too. And a lot of the people who are watching right now, I'm sure do as well. Have you found uh, like particular shows that you've been watching or movies that as a family that you've been excited about or games or anything? Like, what are you doing to, to stay sane? Yeah, you know, we, um, we're one, we're, we're fortunate right now. The weather's been really great in California. Um, so even though we're inside, we're outdoors. I mean, we're not, we're able to go outside. And, so that's been nice. Um, the kids have been coming up with a lot of, um, I mean, they've been, they've been really amazing, actually. Like, uh, one of my daughters was already um, taking online, was already in an online high school program. So for her, it just kept rolling through. The other kids, their teachers have been great. Their schools have been great. Um, one goes to public school and the other one is Montessori. And uh, the Montessori teacher, uh, three times a week, uh, zooms in with their class and it's a bunch of preschoolers zooming in. It's really cute. She sings songs to them and stuff. So being able to, see, you know, the teachers uh, have really been incredible um, that we've been around so that's been that's been good as far as like stuff i mean we start my daughter and my we've kind of like everyone's sort of in their own worlds and then we all come together for dinner and then we all go in our worlds and there's some survivor world like the survivor world is um and then there's like the marvel comic movie world <laughs> yeah. um and uh so it's i've been enjoying watching a lot of the marvel um movies with my 16 year old who is uh, suddenly all of a sudden interested in, see in watching them again so it's been a lot of fun um, yeah we're, we're not kind of there yet we've been we we squeaked out the star wars the entire series but one of them was i think it was Re uh, return of the sith or revenge of the sith that was a little yeah. too intense for my for my 11 year old yeah i know and i'm a, i'm still in mr rogers world and daniel the tiger world with my four-year-old so we're not we're not like and that's in the screen time thing. Like we haven't really upped the screen time from what they normally do. And except for the, except for my older daughters, cause they're on the computer so much more now um, that, uh, that, um, but it's hard. Like my one daughter, she was on swim team, you know, the, they're very active. So the team sports and stuff like that, um, that are, aren't happening right now, you know, it's hard on them, but I have to say they've been really handling it very well and um, looking to find ways so they can help other people too. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Stefan, for doing this. This was great. Thank I'm going to try the recipe tomorrow. I can't wait for my kids to try it and for me to try it. And I hope everyone who's watching now does it too. Again, the recipe is at uh, reverb underscore org Instagram's page. It's in the bio there. And also you can see uh, uh, a little Zoom conversation of our of a bunch of musicians that went to Peru with reverb and our discussion there. And we showed a trailer from the documentary we shot called Antamiki which also has a link if you want it, if you're looking for some, something to check out. We had this amazing and powerful trip to Peru, to the Amazon there, um, where we were hosted by indigenous leaders who are in danger. In fact, there, there, there are murders there by illegal loggers um, of indigenous folks trying to protect their homelands and the ancient forests that are good for all of us uh, in this time of climate crisis. But you can check that out there. And other recipes we, we did last week with Brian and Guster, we did a cauliflower soup that was delicious. Uh, I recommend checking that out also on Instagram's page, on Reverb's Instagram page. And please follow us because we're going to be doing this series again with more musicians, hopefully as soon as uh, next week. So thanks again, Safan. Awesome. Hey, Adam, thanks so much. Thanks for your, and thanks a lot for what you guys do. I mean, it's, it really means a lot um, from my side of the world to have people like you out there helping us and helping others like us um, really promote green touring. And, um, and the thing with the, the catering and, and the farm to table is, is just been amazing. So 
I just want to thank Reverb for all of that as well. Thanks, Fonz. Oh, and all also, right. don't forget to check out uh, the Spotify playlist of the music that you should have playing when, when you make this breakfast, because luckily I've got some birds singing in the background, but when you got the music rolling and you're making breakfast for your kids, it's just, it's one of the best things in the world. That's right. I'm sorry. To, to, thanks for reminding me of that. That's right. You can use the playlist. It's, it's listed uh, under Reverb Spotify list there, uh, Stefan's Cooking Playlist. So you can check it out there. Yeah. You can cook along it's with it. <laughs> I will be doing it tomorrow for sure. Thanks again for joining All us right, guys. for another episode of Reverb's Quarantine Kitchen. And tune in uh, here on Reverb's Instagram for the next episode and check out the past ones. Thanks, Stefan. So good. Yeah, thanks, so thanks a lot, guys. I know.